Hey y'all, this is Billy and Michelle from Permapastures Farm. And look, she's smiling. You know why? Because we are doing what we love. I, I think we're doing what, what the good Lord put us on this planet to do, to do this stuff and show you how to do it. Ain't that right, honey? Mm -hmm. Right from the homestead honey's mouth. How about that? All right, y'all. Today we're gonna get into something that is of profound importance, especially in these times. It seems like I'm saying that right on cue every time. That's, that's his way of saying amen, right? Okay, more and more I find myself saying, man, this is a really important video. But y'all, this is really, really important when you get down to the fact that when you look at the grain shortages that are almost, not almost certainly gonna happen, that are happening, you dig? The fertilizer shortages, what we've been doing right here at this channel from the very beginning really is to show you how to mitigate every single bit of that using permaculture. That's why permaculture is my passion. Okay, so we're gonna go through each animal that we have around here all the way down to the dogs and show you exactly how we take the principles of permaculture, the guidebook of permaculture to feed every last one of them. Now, here we are in the first system. This is the chicken tractor on steroids, okay? And as anybody knows that's been watching us, we've probably tested this system more than anybody else on planet Earth. We've, I was in a conversation the other day with Eric Sider, go check his channel out. Um, that, in fact, by the way, all the cool shirts I have, that's where I got them from, his channel. So, um, we were talking about the full extent of what this system can do. Because at a project that he's working at in California, they're trying to find used systems like this to mitigate the food costs. Also because it's just plain better in every single way. Now, as anybody, you can go back and check out the playlist. And folks, if you're getting to do this, I highly encourage you to go back and do it. But today we're gonna to get down to brass tacks. I'm gonna cover more of the nuts and bolts of it. But before we get into that, we're just gonna go ahead and take what I have in these bags here. And if you've watched the playlist, you'll know what that is. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Washington, D.C. So it's a combination of carbon along with bull urine and bull poop. How about that? We're gonna dump it in first. Now, we got DC down. Now, let's populate it with what they need to eat. Now, typically in a conventional system, people are gonna tell you that you need about a quarter pound of feed per day. Within this system, you don't need anywhere close to that. In fact, you can go down to about an eighth of a pound, even less. I mean, some days, honestly, if there's enough in those compost piles, you don't even need to feed them. Or it'll be like I saw this morning where they have leftover rubbish in there. They will go through it. If you'll notice, they're not mobbing me right now because they have things they already want to eat. Now, chickens with the Pavlovian effect, when they see this bucket, they're thinking, okay, he's got something. But folks, this is what's important. With all these rising grain crops and everything else, you have got to figure out better ways, ingenious ways, ways that maybe I didn't even provide to feed your animals. Now in this bucket, now a lot of people have asked, well, I can't get food scraps. Well, even if you use conventional scraps, the system still works and you need a fraction less. So if you're feeding one chicken, one and a half pounds or one and a half, um, or I'm sorry, 0.5 pounds per day, or I'm sorry, 0.25 pounds per day. Sorry, it's early. Then over the course of a week, you're putting in about a pound and a half per bird. It is a fraction of that if you use this system. Now, in this bucket, just to demonstrate, I got regular conventional feed. Now, if you do it within this system, you better either ferment it or you better put some water in it because what's going to happen if you have, let's say, crumbles or even the, um, uh, the pellets, all it's gonna do is fall right through the cracks and the chickens ain't gonna be able to access it. So all you wanna do is get it wet. Ideally, you wanna ferment it because even then, if your feed is fermented, you're gonna use about 10% less. Now them just being outside in this environment, they're deriving, if you listen to the conventional models or even just the regular models, they're deriving 10% of their diet just from being out here, okay? You can mitigate that to next to nothing just by taking, using this system alone, they're gonna get all their protein and a lot of carbs out of those piles that they missed when they were in this compost cage. They're also going to, frankly, in many different ways, they're gonna outperform 
any chickens that are on straight up conventional feed. They work harder, but guess what? They produce more in terms of eggs. So also in this system, you can, you can constantly incubate new birds to replace the ones you have, extract the ones you have, put them in the freezer. Look y'all, I can't say it any plainer. You can literally provide all your eggs and all your meat and all your compost in this system for largely free. And also with this conversation that I had with Eric the other day, or all the things you can be growing around here. Um, folks, we've showed you videos before that I can take out their regular feed and I can grab a handful of comfrey, throw it in the same spot. They're gonna eat the feed, but they're gonna eat that comfrey first, you dig? That's exactly what I'm getting at. There's so many things you can grow. What do you, what do you call those, trombocino? Trombocinos. Right, so many things that you can grow. Um, and I provided a book list on Patreon on how to do that, okay? On the sources you need to show you all the different ways you can be feeding these animals for nothing, for really nothing. Okay, now let's move on to the next animal. Yeah. You see this? This is the greatest Pyrenees. Ain't that right? Tell them, Milk Boy. That's my dog, Milk Boy. Well, we got three more dogs that are nowhere near as, um, well, they have a purpose, let's say, but it's not the same purpose that he has. Point being, you got to feed them, right? So we've done a video. Go back and check it out on how we feed our dogs. So within this permaculture model, there's ways to feed your animal. Okay, how many chickens do you have? How many eggs do you eat? Do you have surplus eggs? How can you use them? You know, you can give them to your pigs if you need to. You can even give them to your chickens. But that's how we feed our dogs. With the surplus eggs, animal fat that we extract from, from the cows and also the um, pigs. In addition to that, all that organ meat, where do you think it goes? That's right, buddy. The other white meat, but it ain't really white. Anyway. That's how we feed our dogs. And if you want to supplement it, let's say you're buying store-bought dog food, supplement it with these other things and you're going to find out that you need less of it. So you're taking resources you already have and you're putting them into the animals you love. And you know what's best? The reason we even came up with the whole egg thing was because of this, uh, he's a naturopath and also a veterinarian named- Dr. Uh, Joel Wallach. That's right. So it, if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't even have thought about that as simple as it is. And that's where for a time there, all they ate was eggs. And guess what? Not only were they healthier, but honestly, their excrement was, it kind of disappears. It doesn't stick around as much. We also give them the Thorvin organic kelp. How much, how much do you give them? Well, for a large dog, you give them like a quarter of a teaspoon. It's not very much. It's a very little amount. So we, they basically get their minerals through that kelp and they get everything else from what we have left over as a look. Hey, y'all, just like you have your chickens and your pigs to handle all your scraps. Well, these guys can do it too. And guess, go look at what they feed sled dogs and you're going to find out it's an awful lot like what we feed them. They're healthier. And look, I'm not telling anybody out there what to do with your animals. I'm telling you what we do. And does he look malnourished to you? No, these dogs ain't never gonna be malnourished. If, if folks, a little side note, she wants everybody fat but her, <laughs> including me. Yeah, so if you, if you notice I've been putting on a little bit of weight, guess who's been doing a whole lot of baking as of late? No, I haven't. Yeah. No, I haven't. Yeah, you have. Justin's been making all that. He's no, been I sitting haven't. there grinding corn and uh, wheat berries and stuff. And so, you know, she's giving it to me like, here, eat this. Let's make you fatter. Don't believe him. Yeah, she wants everybody fat but her. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Come on, let's go. Yes, let's go. So you have your ruminants out there too. Look y'all, I'll be honest with you. This is the easiest way because honestly, what am I standing on? This is the easiest way to, for them to get fed. I mean, this was nothing but goldenrod and a bunch of other weeds that people generally don't want, but who eats those? These guys do, they eat almost as hearty as a goat. Also, we'll talk about Coco the bull. He's in a paddock next to them. Maybe we can get over here and talk about that a little bit. Okay, right here, you see this poly wire down here? This keeps Coco the bull in. I mean, he's trained enough to where we can really go down to one strand. And in the new model that we're doing, that's exactly what he's gonna wind up doing. But folks, stay tuned for all that because we're 
putting him, we're building a new structure for him. That's going to be a whole nother video. I don't want to confuse you. What's important to realize is when you have ruminants, how do I say this? You want to try to, in, in the words of Jim Garris, you want to kick the hay habit, you dig? You want animals that are going to do well on grass. Whether it's the genet genetics that, like Greg Judy has with the South Pole, whether it's these um, Dexters, which I love because they eat just about everything a, a goat will eat. I mean, from what I've seen. So we got him right here, but what do we have over here? We got sheepies. Look at her. Yeah. So all of them eat very, very hearty stuff. And by the way, these sheep, by the way, is my favorite meat on the planet. Okay, maybe not these sheep, but you did, you get the point. So here they are in a chicken, or I'm sorry, in a sheep tractor that Michelle built. Uh, go back and check that video out. It's pretty awesome. It's our 100th video. But they basically go through the landscape. We don't leave them in one spot. They constantly move. That is one of the downsides to this, y'all, even with the chicken tractor on steroids. when you, The more holistic you become, the less reliant you are on fuel, the more it's gonna require more out of you. So you wanna make sure you have efficient systems where all it takes to move cocoa, take down the poly wire, put them in a new paddock. Also for his buddies that we're gonna have in the future. Same thing with these sheep. We got them in the sheep net here. And it's really simple. It's almost like a battle drill moving them every day. And so, they go through the landscape, get what they need. We don't rape it. Chickens go behind them. You get the whole process. So all of them, our ruminants, are getting fed absolutely wonderfully, beautifully fed, and in accordance with what I said a moment ago about Michelle wanting everything fat but her. Look at these sheep. Fat. And all they get is grass and weeds. How cool is that? So if you don't currently have animals that are adapted to grass, you want to start thinking about doing that right now because guess what? There's a whole, I, I won't go into the whole nuts and bolts of it right now, but hey, just might be a problem in the near future. You see what I'm getting at here? Okay, let's go ahead and talk about pigs. Check it out. I'm going to try to speak up because guess what I got right here? I got a lot of pigs, you dig? Okay, if you watched the video the other day, we were talking about, my goodness, you know, I was a little concerned, not a little, I'll be honest, I was fearful about putting them in here. I'd already lost one pig to a freak accident. I didn't want to lose any more, but at the same time, I, it was it was all fear-based. But anyway, here we are. What do we got in here, y'all? Pretty much all food scraps. Rice, beans, I mean, you name it. It's all in there. Now, I want to point this out, y'all. We raise pigs. I wasn't even completely honest because I didn't think anybody would believe me. We honestly raised them for about 21 cents a pound. And the only reason that is the case is because we don't farrow our own pigs. That's a whole nother operation that I just don't have time to get into right now. But buying the pigs, feeding them out, raising them up, 21 cents a pound, ain't that right, milk black. You ain't getting none of this. We already talked about puppy food and this ain't it. So anyway, look at what they've done already. Pigs are a little trickier, y'all, because they will derive a good piece of their food off the ground, but it's impossible to know. With omnivores, it's a little tougher. It's impossible to know exactly how much, but guess what? I ain't paying for it anyway. So like the guinea hogs, if it runs out longer than I intend, I don't care. This is why you need to be seeking partnerships with every and anybody you can right now, whether it's a local restaurant, whether it's a church group, whether it's food that they can't give at a homeless shelter, they got to put it somewhere and they might be willing to work with you. In fact, these days, I got to literally turn people away. Um, college and universities. There's one place that wants to work with me that has in excess of 600 pounds a day and they're willing to sort it for me. How cool is that? So let me go ahead and get them fed and I'll get right back to it. So I'm just gonna toss it over like so. There you go, piggy piggy. All right, now, how much do I feed them? You know what, because I'm not paying for it, it depends on how much work I want them to do for me too. The more you feed them, the less, either way, they're gonna go out there and root whether you feed them a lot or not. Now, depending on the breed, you may get yourself in a bind as far as getting them too fat like a guinea hog. Okay, back to these guys, they're Yorkshires. So they're out here deriving their food off the land, a good piece of it, and I'm providing what they don't get. 
And in fact, there are some days where I can throw the food down when they're depending on the paddock and depending on time of year, I can throw the food down, they'll sniff at it, look at it. Now this is food they love, but they'll prefer what they're getting out here. They'll circle back and get to it, but you, you get the point. Look y'all, at the end of the day, you don't have to be Edgar Casey or Nostradamus to figure out or make any crazy political prognostications about what's going on in this world, y'all. Just look. And at this site, at this channel, we've been providing from the very beginning how to do it. Now, were we doing it in anticipation of the things that are happening? To a certain extent, yes. Because you know what? Permaculture can and should overlay with preparedness. It's baked right into the permaculture model. It really, really is. So that's what we're doing here. Look at these guys. As they're going after their food down in that thicket, what are they doing? All those rice grains and everything else, they're getting rid of all that nasty stuff. I don't want that multi-floor rose, all those little briars, everything else. They will uproot it just to get that food that I put out there to them, y'all. So here we are. Let's, cut, let's, let's just kind of cover all this. Your chickens. They're raised for free. They're producing you within that system at least a cubic yard of compost per week. It can be much, much more. It can be scaled up. It can be scaled down. But it's done for very little in terms of store-bought items. Now, it does require more out of you, so just be prepared for that. Your animals. Get the ones that are suited for the environment you're in. I didn't even cover it, but what about your bees? There's another harvest you got out right there. They're basically, if you set your place up right, you got enough things they want, guess what? They will flourish. There's some other things about those guys too we'll cover in the future. Okay, your ruminants. Get ones that are adapted to grass, to weeds, that you can put up in the woods. All those things. Your dogs, how are they fed? Your pigs, look at them. And y'all, I'm just giving you the cliff notes. If you want more and in greater detail and where you can find resources, look, you got to check us out on Patreon. That's where I drop a lot of that stuff. It's a supplement, or you could even call it in these days a combat multiplier to the information that we provide right here on this YouTube channel. So, y'all, I won't belabor the point. I did want to go into more detail because I can't think of a time where it's more consequential than right now. If you want more information on this, check us out on Patreon. If you need the world's best deer repellent, we call it Bone Sauce. Check us out at the website, Unique Comfrey. We got it at the website also. Consultations, William's a little tied up right now, but maybe if it's a phone consultation or, or if you're local, maybe he can help you out there. We also have a person that's willing to work with us in that regard. So anyway, reach out to us. We're glad to have it. Leave your comments down below. And remember, like I said before in the last video, Reach out to the other people in this thread. Be a blessing. Be an encouragement. We all need that in these times, even me. So thank you so much for your support. Till next time, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see you next time.